80% of Britain is still farmland, and yet less than 2% of the population has anything to do with agriculture at all. I've been involved with farming for nearly 40 years. And I've noticed that there is a new feeling about it. People want to get back to the land. They want to grow food. They want to look after animals. Sausages. And in this series, I'm going to help six very different people try and make their dream of returning to the land a living reality. The county of Warwickshire, right in the centre of the country, has rich soil that has been farmed and fought over for thousands of years. But making a living from the land can still be a struggle today. I'm about to visit a farm that has all kinds of unusual features to it. It's a person that's new to farming, come from the city. She's a woman. She's also farming a really exotic animal. Her farm consists entirely of alpacas. <music> 33-year-old Kirti Vedja used to work in marketing in London. Last year, she left the city behind to live out her dream of farming South American alpacas. Come on, girls. Come on, Angie. A lot of friends thought I was crazy but I think when people see me on the farm with the animals, it kind of all makes sense and all slots into place. Kirti fell in love with alpacas the moment she set eyes on them. I was looking for cashmere gloves online and stumbled across this alpaca website. And everything I read about them, they just really appealed. You don't have to eat them, which I love. They're not dirty and smelly and, like, gross. She plans to raise breeding females and stud males, selling them on for up to £15,000 each. And as well as rearing alpacas, she intends to make products from their super soft wool. They've been called, you know, the ideal livestock, and to me, they really are. Kirti spent three years researching alpacas and saving up her money. Impressed by her commitment, her parents agreed to help. And together, they've spent over £200,000 setting up Fairy Tale Farm on 14 acres of green fields near Kenilworth. But today, Kirti's farm stands empty after she made one disastrous mistake. In the haste to see her dream made real, she began building on the land without waiting for the appropriate planning permission. This is my log cabin which has been described as horrific by various um, town councillors, and they've said they want to bulldoze it and rip it up. I actually think it looks quite nice. But she was ordered to stop, leaving her house and outbuildings half-built. Despite this, Kirti moved into a caravan, but she was unable to endure the harsh weather of last year's winter and retired to her flat in London, putting her alpacas into livery and the farm on hold. Now, Kirti and her family face financial ruin. I wasn't expecting all these planning hassles. I was expecting problems with the animals, problems with living on my own, problems with missing friends and family. And actually, that's been hard, but I just want to get my business up and running. It's now April, and having lost her incentive to carry on farming, I'm going to try and help her get going again. In my first visit to Kirti, the thing to do is just concentrate on the farming and how she can get the most from her piece of land. To start with, I need to have a good look around and get a feel for the land. Hello, Kirti. Hello. Hi, Monty. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. I feel that I have to mention something that struck me the minute I arrived. Fairy Tale Farm is not a normal name for a farm. Why did you call it that? Um, I wanted a name that people would remember. 
I also wanted a name which I could use for the, al the alpaca product as well. Kirti's 14-acre farm is about the size of eight football pitches and is divided up into paddocks for the alpacas. She's already spent over £35,000 on fences and buildings, including the chalet-style farmhouse. I know that she's done a lot of work researching her alpacas, but I wonder how much research she's done on her land. This is very wet. You've got sorrel, you've got buttercup. These are plants that only grow in wet, heavy ground. Yeah, well, it's interesting because uh, you're coming from a totally different place because, to me, this is just grass. It's never just grass. You're keeping alpacas. Yeah. They've got to eat. Yeah. They're going to eat mainly grass. Yeah. So this is absolutely the raw material yeah. of your business. OK. There are still only 20,000 alpacas in Britain, so all profitable alpaca farming is based around breeding them as livestock. Top stud males can sell for up to £15,000 each. However, if you have a registered agricultural holding number, you can buy an alpaca for as little as £350, and you can keep five to six animals per acre of pasture. They're very hardy and feed happily on quite rough grass and hay, but do need a protein supplement in winter. Alpacas have docile temperaments, and as they have no upper teeth, they can't bite but approach them with respect, because they will spit at you if alarmed. But Kirti's land is now empty of alpacas, and she seems low and dispirited, although she started this farm with a rush of passion and activity. I think that I need to find out more about her running with the council. Let me just get this straight. You applied for planning permission. Yeah. Didn't wait for it to come and started work anyway. Yeah. Why didn't you wait? Because I need to get my business up and running. That's the bottom line. But as things stand, you can't live in your cabin. You can't build your barn. Yeah. You can't even keep your animals on site. I'm allowed to keep the animals on site. It's me being here which is proving a problem. Obviously, Kirti shouldn't have built on Greenbelt land without proper council planning permission, but her desire to farm seems genuine. I think I'm going to go across here. I think that's probably wise. Because I don't have weddings on. I'd like to help her free herself from this tangle she's got into. Tell me, what do, what do your neighbours think about alpacas and you and this whole venture? I don't know, they seem to be self-appointed guardians of the countryside who are very against any development, who think the alpacas are an excuse to put up a cheap house in Greenbelt. Are they? No, they genuinely aren't. Right. It's not hard to see why the locals are nervous. Naturally reserved, Kirti's made little effort to meet or talk to her neighbours, and now she's moved off-site, the farm feels empty and abandoned. What's stopping you now, I mean, literally, this week, getting the alpacas back in here, staying in the caravan, and getting cracking. Nothing. You're going to be working 18 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. So are you doing that now? No. <laughs> Putting the planning issues to one side, it's clear to me that Kirti is simply not working hard enough on her farm. You know, this isn't going to work. It, it can't happen as it's set up now. Now, this incredibly brave thing, a lone woman tackling a project, but where's the tackle? Where's the, the sort of hunger to get out there and do things, anything, anything to get this project going? Former marketing executive, Kirti Vaidya, has a dream of farming alpacas, but swept up in her passion for the project, she built a farmhouse without planning permission incurring the wrath of the local council and her neighbours. The animals she loves are being stabled 15 miles away at Toff Manor Alpaca Farm. I'm on my way there now. And the thing that interests me is to see with my own eyes the relationship that Kirti has with these animals because clearly it's that relationship that is at the heart of her attitude to the whole farming enterprise. 
Kirti has spent more than £30,000 on seven adult alpacas, which is an incredible investment compared to traditional livestock like sheep, which can cost less than £100 each. Can you identify them individually? Yeah. Okay. This little form one here is Titania, which I oh, named. Nice. The black one is Velocity and her baby Tiger Lily. She's like a sort of poodle with the yeah. wrong neck. This one here is Sweet Sicily. Yeah. This slightly large one with a slightly donkey face is Dymphna. So they've all got names. And they've all got names. They're all microchipped, ear tagged and registered with the British Alpaca Society. Right. Tell me what it is that made you, I think, fall in love with alpacas, isn't it? Yeah, look at your face, it lights up <laughs> when you're with the animals. Well, I find them fascinating and magical. They're very curious creatures. They're always interested in what you're doing. I just find them a lot more interesting and a lot more fascinating than your average farm animal. Kitty's family, including her mother Anne and brother Kieran, have consistently supported her emotionally and financially. Indeed, Anne is desperate for her daughter to succeed as a farmer. We've always felt that when she found the right thing, she would do well at it, but we weren't quite sure what it was. So alpacas, I seem to get from what you're saying, are something that you believe, you and your husband believe, is that she's really interested in. Yes. And will provide the focus that perhaps you feel she needs. Yes. We don't have lots of money, but we've invested what um, we inherited from my father for Kirti. But Kirti's battle with the town council in nearby Kenilworth has taken a heavy toll. She's doing something worthwhile, yeah. and at the moment, we feel some of the ways that they've gone about it, for whatever reasons, are not actually reasonable. Anyway, don't, don't get upset about it, it's fine, because I'm sure it will come good. Kirti clearly loves alpacas, yet what's missing is any sign of interest in farming. To make the alpacas a success, she needs to get back on her land, to look after it and make a real connection with it. I sit down with Kirti and her family and tell them how I see their situation. What is missing out of this equation, from you personally, is direct physical engagement. You're talking the talk absolutely brilliantly but you're not walking the walk. And my advice to you is start walking. Get back on your land. Yeah. Do it through hell or high water. Do it now. Half your land you can't use for alpacas, get some sheep in. Grow some herbs, keep some chickens. But when you actually get to the core of alpacas, you're talking 5,000 pounds upwards for a breeding female when you sell her. Now, I don't know how many herbs I'd have to grow to make 5,000 pounds. The cash you earn will be very little, but at the moment, I don't believe this business. I think it's a fairy tale. And to make it come alive, it needs energy and action. And the one thing that you haven't yet got, the land is more than just food for animals. It's more than just a conventional farming. There is something incredibly rich and deep about the land. Mm -hmm. And unless you understand that in your bones, it won't work. Kitty must return to her land, engage with it through day-to-day -day farming activities, and make the effort to forge links with local people to show them that she's serious about what she's doing. He's made a lot of sense. I need to just put the planning to one side and just think, right, well, I've got to do what's right for my business and my farm, so I've just got to go for it now. To set her on the right track, I'm sending Kirti up to Yorkshire to meet Beata Kubitz, who's a dedicated shepherdess. Hello, I'm Kirti. Hello, Kirti, nice to meet you. And you. Beata gave up her high-powered job in London six years ago to farm sheep in the Calder Valley and to produce and sell woolen clothing. She's a real passion for the land, and I hope this will inspire Kirti. Hello. Oh, aren't you gorgeous? I think it's because she lacks confidence, but for some reason, Kirti has detached herself from practical farming. But today, I want her to get stuck in, starting with shepherding a mother sheep back to her pen. 
Um, miscreant number one is over there. It's that you with the little lamb. Um, if we can catch him, that'll be marvellous. <laughs> Now Kirti must use the lamb to entice the ewe back into the field below. kirti has got your lamb. What do you think of that? Oh, that's a good one. The job is successfully completed, although I'm not sure Kirti is sold on sheep yet. They're not as intelligent as alpacas. Kirti has plans to produce clothing with her alpaca wool, and I see no reason why she couldn't use sheep's wool too. Beata shows her how this is done, right down to shearing them herself. I hand shear. This is my toolbox. So here we go. One little sheepy. Oh. You're going from the neck downwards. Yeah. Opening it up, essentially. Mm -hmm. Sheep are cheap and relatively easy to rear and could be a good source of income for Kirti. A male will produce four kilograms of wool in a year, which is enough for six jumpers. Wow. There you go, one fleece. It's nice meeting someone doing something similar. It kind of bolsters your confidence to know that someone else is doing something similar and they're able to sort of manage. At dinner time, it turns out that the two have something more than their gender in common. Both have had trouble convincing suspicious neighbours about what they were doing. To start with, the people were very kind of sceptical. I mean, you see a lot of people, there's, the word is hobby farmers. Yeah. But particularly with your neighbours, if you can involve them, you know, show them what you're doing, it's, people tend to be afraid or, or sceptical about the unknown, don't yeah. they? And, and that's certainly true. I hope that Kirti will be inspired by Beata's shop just down the road in Todd Morden, which sells lovely clothes made from her own sheep's wool, as well as from other animals, including alpacas. See, this is what I can make out of Velocity and her new career. Oh, it's beautiful. Kirti's visit to Beata does seem to have strengthened her resolve to reconnect with Fairytale Farm and to introduce other types of livestock, as well as alpacas. It's been very inspiring, a little bit intimidating. I've kind of realised how much I've actually got to do. And I think I'm a lot more positive about getting some sheep now. Two weeks later, at home in Warwickshire, Kirti is back on her land. She's still not got planning permission to live in her chalet, so she's moved back into the caravan on the site. Today, after four months away in livery, her alpacas are coming back home to the farm. Yay! Don't be left behind. It's so good to just be back on the site because the, the land has felt so empty and dull and sort of vacant. The alpacas! There's something very magical about them. It's like alpaca therapy, I suppose. But just a few days later, someone nearby has spotted that Kirti is back and working on her chalet. They've informed the council, which has reissued its stop notice, reminding her that without planning permission, she must not live in the house. You might not see people, but you're always being watched. Whereas in a city, you're surrounded by millions of people and none of them give a damn what you're doing. You move to the country and you've got five neighbours and everyone knows everything about you. And I knew it would kind of be like that in the country. So it's not like people are coming to greet you with baskets of eggs or anything like that. It's June and I'm back in Warwickshire for my second visit to Fairytale Farm. I do think that for Kirti, it's really important that since I last saw her, she's engaged with her land a bit more, got to know what's growing and, and made plans for what she can do with it. And that she makes provision for some more conventional animals that come on, use the land, and also create some cash flow. Oh, finally, it's got them back. 
it's apparent that there is a new energy about the place. Kirti's also been exploring the possibilities of bringing other stock onto the land. And I hear that you've been looking at maybe getting some sheep. Yeah, I've been looking at uh, rare breed sheep. But what about now? I mean, what about getting some locally? Is that possible, do you think? Any sheep that you could just use as grass cutters? I mean, interestingly, there is a farm sale literally going on in the field behind us by the farmer who sold me the this next land. door farm? Yeah, literally next door. And you're saying they're selling some sheep? They are selling some sheep. Do you want to go right now? Change of plans, let's just go and have a look. Yeah, um, yeah that All sounds right, good come to on. me. A local farmer is selling up and auctioning his stock. It's a perfect opportunity for Kirti to buy some sheep and make a connection with her neighbours at the same time. Have you been to a farm sale before? I've never been to a farm sale. This is my first one. It'll be an education for you. It's a big one. I love it. You don't have to be a farmer to go to a farm sale. They're open to everyone. And if there's one in your area, it'll be advertised in the local paper. There's always odd lots like this, and you never... It may look like junk, but you never know. There might be something in there that you really need and you're looking for. Okay. And it's all about sort of resilience, the ability to fix things, mend things, bodge things. Serious bidders will be looking for bargains in farm machinery, tools, livestock, or odd bits and bobs. But many others will be there just as an excuse for a day out, have a good snoop, and a chat. Take so old he is, remember his son. Farm sales are always auctions, so prices will vary hugely from sale to sale, but it's often the cheapest way to acquire farm equipment or livestock. All in all, it's a perfect place for Kirti to buy some local sheep. I mean, if you're going to be buying any sheep, you want to look for certain things, just very, very obvious things. Yeah. You know, they've got to be healthy. They don't want to have dirty bottoms, because that probably means they've got worms. And they want to have a nice, strong body. The farmer selling the sheep is eager to help. Kirti's neighbours clearly aren't all as hostile as she thought. The guy has been very helpful. He's offered to deliver them effectively, to drive them down with his dogs. He'll help her look after them. She'll never get a better opportunity. And the price is great. The sheep are sold as a job lot of 14 ewes plus their lambs. Now, this next lot, you like this lot. I like the ones with black lambs. Kirti has to concentrate, as the auction is very fast and the bidding competitive. OK, catch the eye of the guy over there, OK, with the kibble, catch the eye. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Go with it, yes, go, go, yeah. Oh, my God, I've just bought loads are. of lambs. OK, 180. Put it like this, it's cost you less than half of one old packet. <laughs> when you put it like that? Yeah. For £2,000, Kirti is now the owner of 14 ewes and their lambs, 39 sheep in all. The sellers are as good as their word and help us drive the sheep across the adjoining fields to Fairytale Farm. The sheep settle into their new home, and I really hope that their presence on the farm will help Kirti bond with her land and make her feel that she truly belongs here. What you've got to think is you're not an island. You are part of the bigger picture and the yeah. community. And the more you can have to do with it, the better things will go for you here. Yeah. And as someone who's born and bred and brought up in the country, I promise you that's the way it works. Yeah. Good-o. A good day. <laughs> no, a really good day. You should be proud. I th yeah, I am proud. Next, you'll be trying to get goats, pigs, cows and ducks on here. <laughs> I'm helping Kirti Vaidya get back onto her farm and get on with the job of farming it. Yesterday, she bought a small flock of sheep, bringing new life and energy to the land that she had previously been neglecting. But she still hopes to make big money breeding alpacas. So far this year, Kirti has bred seven young, or kriya, which are kept in a separate paddock from the adults. How approachable are they? They'll always walk away rather than to you. Kitty's whole business plan is based upon selling these young alpacas as breeding stock. Although I think she'll find it hard to let them go because she's developed a close relationship already with each of them. She's the naughtiest, that's Willow. This one here. The one right in the middle, yeah. Right. right. The girls tend to be a lot more nervous than the boys. They kind of take off at slightest thing. Kitty thinks that one of these young alpacas has real stud potential. 
Now this is Oberon, who's slowly getting to know me. Yeah. Come on. This is the biggest, right. oldest one, and he's definitely the boss of the herd. And he's right. the one we're hoping might have stud potential. If Oberon does as well as she hopes at this year's agricultural shows, he could be worth thousands of pounds and start Fairytale Farm on the road to profitability. But I still feel that making this farm sustainable will not happen unless Kirti makes more of an effort to reach out to the local community. I think Kirti is sheltering in a comfort zone and she needs to get out of it. So I'm going to set her a challenge, which is to take herself and some alpacas out to her neighbours. So she has to go and talk to them and meet them where they are. And that means that her neighbours, people in the community, can smell them, can see them, can talk to Kirti about why she feels so passionate about them and why she should be allowed to farm them on her own land. Now, she won't want to do this, I'm sure, but if she does, I think it could be a real breakthrough. I also think that it's going to be a real challenge for Kirti. I'm a bit nervous because it's kind of inviting them into your world and I generally like to keep most people at arm's length. So it is, it is going to be a little bit weird for me. Before she faces her neighbours, there's another hurdle for Kirti to overcome, the annual Kenilworth Agricultural Show. This is a chance for local farmers to show off their best livestock in order to produce prize-winning animals. Kirti is entering her young alpacas into competition for the first time. You do tend to feel a little bit isolated just on your own in the farm, so it's lovely coming to an event like this. It makes you feel like part of an alpaca community. Yeah, it was lovely to see you. However, this is more than a social event. It's an important stage in rearing any valuable animal, and Kirti's most promising alpaca must win awards. Well, I'm hoping Oberon's going to do well. Oberon's kind of the important one, because we're thinking about using him as a stud. As long as there is a suitable class, anyone can enter any kind of farm animal at an agricultural show, and alpacas are often on display. First to be shown by Kirti today are Tinkerbell and Willow. Fidgety, this long. Yeah, she's the most highly strong. The judges are looking for healthy bodies, glossy coats, and good teeth. Tinkerbell has come forth, which is a definite step in the right direction for Kirti. Tinkerbell, yay! But Kirti has more in her mind than just winning awards. Vile. This morning, her brother Kieran found a letter tied to the farm gate. If you can do what you want because you're rich, you are inciting a revolution, beware. Just piss off away from where you do not belong and take your llamas with you, signed Kenilworth. Nice. Yeah, charming. I mean, this is basically um, a threat, really. Just when you think you're kind of, you know, going in the right direction and you're making friends and you're getting to know people and then somebody sticks that on your gate. And I don't know, maybe that's the first of many. I don't know what's going to happen next. However, in the meantime, Kirti and her parents, Anne and Kirit, must try and focus on today's competition. Their hopes are riding on Oberon doing well. King of fairy tale. He's the first born, actually. Thank you. The judge has five rosettes to award, from first to fifth place. He's actually a year old today. After due deliberation, Oberon is adjudged to come last. Oh, poor Oberon. I think you deserve to win. It's a tough lesson for Kirti, and not enough for her just to love her alpacas. Only the very best win prizes, and only the ones that win the top prizes command the top money, which she will need to keep her farm going. A month later, the moment has come for the alpacas to start paying for themselves in other ways. 
are being sheared of their fleeces. The alpacas are going to benefit massively. I mean, it's so hot, it's going to be 30 degrees apparently this weekend. They need their fleece taken off as soon as possible, really. Shearing an alpaca is a two-man job, performed today by specialist Australian alpaca handlers. Quite a delicate part around the eyes. And the alpacas don't just get shorn. Each animal gets a thorough going over. You can see the teeth are too long there. So what we do is we just trim them off using a diamond cutter. This is completely painless and relieves pressure on the mouth. They definitely look a lot happier, don't they? Kitty has got plans for alpaca wool products. And with the raw material now all bagged up, she's ready to move forward with this. I'm going to have to sort through it and try and remove all the sort of debris and hay and straw and muck and everything else, and then take it down to where the mill is. So Kitty's next stop is 60 miles south in Buckinghamshire the home of Mia Harrison, a mill owner. Mia is going to turn my raw fleeces into uh, wool to be made into product, and she has to put them through a variety of machines. Um, and then the end product is wool. You can actually get knitted up into stuff. But this will sort of keep my business ticking along until I come to the point where I'm able to sell breeding females. How do you pronounce the name? Or how do you... Dimpna. First, each fleece is carefully weighed. This is Oberon. Male alpacas produce between six and eight kilos of wool, with females yielding about five or six. She's weighing in at 876 grams. It's quite soft. It is lovely. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. Oh, she's, she's not much to look at. It will all be washed thoroughly before being air dried and then put through a picking machine. And this opens up the fibers to turn the clumps into fine strands. A raw alpaca fleece is worth around 35 pounds, which is up to 30 times as much as a sheep's fleece. But then if the wool is processed into products, it can make five or six times that again in profits. Eventually, the wool ends up on a bobbin, ready to be knitted. Getting approval from Mia has clearly been a boost for Kirti's confidence. She seemed to like the fleeces, so that was cool. At least I'm sort of on the right track. But the greatest test of Kirti's confidence is about to come. Today is the day of the challenge that I set her. She and her alpacas must put themselves on display in Talisman Square in the nearby town of Kenilworth so they can meet and get to know the local community. Right, let's try and get this looking a bit less like a jumble sale. Kitty and her family have organised an impressive display, and it's time to discover if she really can build bridges with her neighbours. It'd be nice to be able to speak to people face to face, and if they've got questions and queries, we can answer them direct rather than all this kind of hypothesising about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And if there's any hecklers, Mum can deal with them, because she's good at that. But after the hostility that they face from some locals, being here is understandably an unnerving experience for them. We're quite anxious because we feel that we are outsiders. We hope that people will see that we're not these kind of awful people. Oh, oh yes. that is That's gorgeous. Lovely. It's absolutely fantastic. This is lovely. Keen to help. Beata has come down from Yorkshire to give people in Kenilworth an idea of the kind of products Kirti one day hopes to be making. Alpacas! Alpacas are shy, and none of Kirti's have ever seen a town before, so she's chosen her three bravest to face the public. Within moments of their arrival, the alpacas draw a crowd. Now it is vital that Kirti, despite her shyness, rises to the challenge of engaging with them. Today will be fascinating because it's going to take Kirti out of her comfort zone. She's going to be free from the bubble of planners and alpacas and have to deal with the public on their terms and speak their language. And I'm going to be fascinated to see how she copes with that because this really is important. It's really going to make a difference. 
Monty. Nice to see you. Monty. Nice to see How's you. It going? It's going all right so far. Kirti and her family have really made an effort to show that they are serious about alpaca farming. They've invited spinners and knitters to show what can be done with alpaca wool, South American musicians to add a suitable atmosphere, and there's a children's painting competition. As the crowd builds, Kirti's mother, Anne, takes control. They're not pets, they're herd animals, mm. so they're used to being in a paddock. But I can see that Kirti is letting her mother do all the communicating. Well, she doesn't seem to be making any effort to do so herself. What's slightly worrying is Kirti's not engaging with people. She's not trying to talk to them. And I think that's what I'm going to try and do, is get her to actually speak to people and listen to people. Right. We need to talk to as many people as possible. Yeah. They're so soft, aren't they? Yeah. Right? They are absolutely beautiful. I mean, I've, I've got a few sheep as well, and it's totally different. I mean, sheep fleece is oily and it's mm -hmm. coarse, yes. but yeah. they are absolutely gorgeous. This little one is Peter Pan, who was born last September. Peter Pan? Yeah. Well, they don't seem to attack you like ostriches. Do. Oh, no. God. They're very <laughs> they do spit, apparently. Do they? Oh. No, I haven't been spat on one, but <laughs> apparently they spit. Just as I hoped, Kirti's charm offensive immediately gets a positive response. It's the closest I've ever been to one, actually. It's beautiful. Amazing. I didn't know he could make jumpers out of them. <laughs> Kirti has a petition which she'll present to the local council to try and help her win her planning battle. I mean, obviously, the council are against it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that local people are against it, and that's what we're sort of trying to show. Oh, thank you ever so much. However, not everyone is happy to sign the petition. I'm very much against it, actually. Are you? I am, yes. I think Greenbelt should be protected all we can. But this is a chance for opinions of all kinds to be aired freely in public. No, I'm liking this. It's got a good atmosphere, because after what Kirti was saying about how she felt everyone was against her, um, it seems like it's not really the case. But enough of all this alpaca stuff. Now for the really big moment. I must judge the painting competition. Tara, age 22. I really like these two here. OK. Well done. That's really good. But the real winner today is Kirti. By finally engaging with the locals around her, she's gained some much-needed support. At the end of the day, I take her to the lovely ruins of Kenilworth Castle to see if she still feels under siege. See, I think today was a real success. Yeah. The general consensus was, you know, good luck, keep going, you know, just supporting small businesses, supporting the countryside. So, yeah, generally very, very supportive and very enthusiastic. It was yeah. just about human contact. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's not something that you easily do. You're quite shy about that sort of thing. I'm I quite think. private, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I and don't like talking about myself and being centre stage. But it freaks me out. It's really important because it shows people that you're just like them. Yeah. And also shows you that they're just like you too. Yeah. So there has been movement, hasn't there? Yeah. Today has been a big, big step for Kirti. She's gone right out of her comfort zone. She's gone out, met people and talked to them and found that they're not so scary. In fact, the truth is what she's found out is they're just like her. It's now September. Six weeks since Kirti's big day when she showed off her beloved alpacas to her Warwickshire neighbours. I'm hoping to see some real change on our farm since then. The one thing that's been very frustrating really with Kirti is her lack of engagement with the land and it's all this obsession with alpacas. If only I got a sense before I left that she was committed personally and physically to this piece of land and this place, well, it would be great. I'd leave a happy man. It's a good sign that she's still toughing it out in her caravan. Hello, Kitty. Hi, Monty. Time to see. How, are How are you? you? I'm very well. Good. And with her planning battle continuing to hang over her, I'm also pleased to find that she's still reaching out to the locals for support. This is the Save Fairy Tale Farm 
thing that I saw at Kenilworth. Yeah, we've yeah. got such a good response that we decided to put some copies on the footpath. Good luck. All yeah. the best. Absolutely. Why not? And I think apart from anything else, that just gives you strength and courage, doesn't it? Definitely. So, I'll tell you what I would really like to do today. I would love to go round the farm and you show me all the things that have happened since I first came here and first went round it. OK. Kirti now has 17 alpacas, with a new one born just three weeks ago. And she still has the sheep that we brought together back in June. And how are you finding looking after the sheep? I don't think I had enough to make that much difference. I think if I was going to do it, you'd have to do it in a much more sort of measured way and invest in electric fencing, put them on a certain patch, let them graze it down, move them. So maybe for next year, if I'm still here, I can look at it in a much more sort of structured way. And why would you not be here next year? Um, if we don't get planning, if we lose the appeal, which we won't know until early next year. Until last year, Kirti didn't even have a small back garden. This has been a big jump. And as she shows me around the full 14 acres of her farm, I can see that it is a daunting prospect for her. Do you ever come and walk down here? Yeah. What do you think when you do that? Um, kind of disbelief that we actually own it and that this is now my home. I don't know, it's a bit intimidating when you look at it because there's so much to do down here. And um, this big, massive, I don't even know what it is. Well, it's dog rose and bramble. Make bramble jelly in, <laughs> in your caravan in the evening. I think it's lovely on somebody else's land where you just come along, pick your berries and make your jam, but when mm. you've got all these spiky, deadly things on your land, it's not quite as exciting. And it's your land all spiky and deadly. Yeah. The truth is that Kirti feels overwhelmed and even threatened by her own land. Back in the spring, I had suggested that she start to grow some herbs and vegetables. So this is your raised bed? Yeah, I think probably room for improvement. <laughs> it's all very disappointing. Nothing seems to have moved on here, apart from the alpacas. As we sit down for lunch with her parents, Anne and Kirit, I ask to see some of the ideas she has for products that could be made with the alpaca wool. Well, tell, me, tell me about this. Well, this is something really that I put together, mainly to take to the alpaca mill, just to show me a kind of idea of what I want to be making. I mean, most of these are sort of shawls. It's progressing. You've got yeah. the fleeces, you've got some designs, you've got ideas, you've got... That is real movement and real progression. But, I mean, ultimately, the products are a, are a byline. The money's in selling breeding females, but hopefully the products will keep the business ticking over until the time comes when I've got enough females to start selling them. Mm. Kirti's agricultural passion is restricted to alpacas and their products. She certainly has no passion or even a basic instinct for farming. And I think that if she keeps on trying and failing to manage this land, it could wreck what is potentially a good business. I feel something is going terribly wrong here. And I think I know what it is. And the debate is, is do I just walk away from this? Be pleasant, be nice, say goodbye, wish them well, and keep my thoughts to myself, or am I honest with Kirti? because she won't like what I'm going to say, if I am honest, but I won't like myself if I don't say it. And I think I've got to do it. I've got to tell her what I think. And it's not going to be good. So I have asked Kirti and her family to meet me in the main alpaca paddock. The relationship between you, Kirti, and the land is not really sustaining or sustainable. Kirti, I don't think you're a countrywoman. <laughs> I don't think you're a farmer, and I don't think you ever will be. Now, that's not a criticism, it's an observation. And my advice to you will be to sell this land, get someone else to look after the alpacas, buy the animals, sell the animals, control the marketing of the produce, but don't involve yourself in the day-to-day -day business of trying to make the land work. But to me, farming is not jumping on a tractor and ploughing and sowing and hoeing and everything else. It's about the alpacas. All I'm saying is, if you can separate the alpaca side of things from your commitment to the land, I think the alpacas will go better. Well, that you're a lot getting of people bogged would in probably around. say that, to be fair. And don't get bogged down in another tangle like the planning, because I think farming would end up a tangle for you. 
Well, I didn't think she'd like what I had to say. But I admire Kitty's determination and bloody-mindedness. And no matter what I say or think, it seems she's not ready to give up Fairytale Farm yet. We've pumped so much time and money and effort into this land. Until we're literally forced off it, I'm not going to give up. I always say that, that's kind of a motto that I live by. It's better to try and fail than never to try at all. However much you dream of a farm, it's got to become a reality. It's never going to be a fairy tale. And what Kirti has shown me is, it doesn't matter how true and great your passion for a certain type of animal might be, if your passion isn't for the land and for farming, the chances are it won't be a reality.